Hi everyone, this is Sajad Muslihi. In this video, I'm going to show you how to simulate two-phase flow in MRST and also include the effect of Viskin's fingering in it. Uh, as you probably know, in the previous video, uh, I also uh, made a simulation uh, of two-phase flow. But this time, as I told you, um, Viskin's fingering um, you know, has shown its contribution to our simulation. Uh, all right, so the first two pictures that are shown here uh, show uh, the distribution of the properties that we have uh, and this picture um, shows the final image of our simulation uh, and we will you know deal with them and we will talk about them in a minute. All right, so uh, the first three lines of the code as always uh, are to make sure that everything is clear. Um, and no external things are going to interrupt our program. Um, so let's start the main part of the code. We're going to construct our reservoir. Uh, actually, we're going to have uh, a Cartesian grid. And also, we're going to have um, a reservoir uh, with 50 cells in the X direction, 50 cells in the y direction and one cell in the z direction. All right, and uh, we want the lengths of the reservoir to be the same as the cell dimensions. So uh, we want our reservoir to be 50 meters long in the x direction, actually, and 50 meters wide uh, and uh, one meter high in the vertical direction. And as always, we use the function card grid uh, to um, actually get the information of uh, the model that we're going to have. The first input argument of this function is um, actually the cell dimensions. And the second input argument, which is not uh, written here, uh, is the physical dimensions. But you might be wondering why uh, it's not written here. Because uh, the physical dimensions are the same as the cell dimensions. So in this case, I don't need to uh, you know, repeat these numbers. Uh, and you know, it's something redundant. All right? So I'm not going to. Of course, if you write it, there's no problem. But um, you, know, um, you know, try to be brief. All right? Um, so we constructed a reservoir and uh, we use these functions to, of course, these functions are, um, you know, additional, um, you know, just to, you know, show you, um, you know, this output. Uh, actually, let me clear all the uh, output that I have uh, to see exactly what's going on. Uh, so as I told you, you know, these are, uh, you know, the codes. Uh, you know, actually the code that is going to show me um, the reservoir that I have. And this last line of this section um, is going to compute some uh, additional, um, you know, properties um, and parameters of a reservoir, like the volumes of each cell, you know, the cells that I have in the reservoir, the centroids of the cells, and things like them. All right? And you might uh, ask yourself, uh, why I did this, you know, uh, but I did this because uh, I might need this information, uh, you know, in the following, all right? But here, I don't need it, all right? So let me run this section uh, to see uh, what the reservoir looks like. And this is the grid of the reservoir. And uh, as you see, uh, it is two-dimensional uh, because we only have one cell in the z-direction. All right, so this part is done. Let's go to the next section of the code. Here, I'm going to specify the rock properties of the reservoir, and I have used uh, part of uh, the data set, uh, this PE10 data set that uh, you know, we have on uh, MRSD and uh, actually uh, 
um, you know, this data set is uh, the reservoir information, you know, the, uh, the porosity and the permeability of a very large reservoir. But, you know, uh, by writing, uh, you know, these lines of code, uh, I have uh, only used part of this information, uh, you know, and that's it. Uh, you know, here I have loaded, um, you know, the data set, and, uh, and actually I'm not going to, you know, go through all of these because uh, they're very clear, and let me, you know, give you some overall explanation. Um, you know, I, you know, here I have uh, created, um, you know, subscripts of the cells that I want to use, uh, and um, by using the function sub to end, I have uh, actually converted uh, those subscripts to linear indices. And I've put those linear indices in the variable end. And here I have used this variable to um, you know, get uh, the permeability and the porosity of um, you know, the reservoir. And because um, you know some of these um, porosities um, are equal to zero, uh, I have set them um, you know to epsilon because um, if these um, you know numbers, if the porosity is equal to zero, uh, we will certainly see errors uh, in uh, computation of um, you know the function that I have in the following. So. Uh, I have, um, you know, set them equal to epsilon. Uh, so it's not uh, a very important thing. Uh, you know, epsilon is a very small number, and it is so small that you know can be considered equal to zero. So you know, this solves the problem. So I do this. All right. Uh, here I have uh, computed the half transmissibilities. Uh, and we will use this later. Uh, and here I have written some lines to show you, um, you know, the porosity and also permeability distributions in our reservoir. All right. Let me open this up to, uh, you know, see it more clearly. All right. And as you see here, and actually uh, these are uh, the pictures uh, which uh, I showed you at the beginning of this video. And this is actually the permeability distribution. And uh, as it is obvious, um, you know, the permeability of the cells that are in these parts of the reservoir uh, are more than the other parts. And also the porosity is almost the same all right this is the porosity distribution and uh, yeah that's it let me close this that's enough let me uh, go to the next part now it's time to define the fluid properties uh, I want uh, you know the injected water to be one centipoise uh, the oil viscosity uh, is 5 centipoise, 1 centipoise, 5 centipoise. The water density is equal to uh, 1,000 kilograms per cubic meters, and uh, the oil density is set to 700 kilograms per cubic meters. And uh, here I'm going to use the simplified Brooks and Corey model, uh, you know, to calculate, uh, you know, the fluid relative permeabilities and uh, which I've already uh, explained to you about and I use this function to define the fluid model uh, the viscosities the, actually the densities and the Cori exponents uh, that I want to have and th the first number is the property of the aqueous phase and the second number uh, actually uh, are the properties are actually the properties of uh, the oleic phase. Uh, I can also use uh, this function init simple fluid j funk 
uh, to consider the effect of capillary pressure uh, but in this case I'm not gonna use it but you can do it for yourself all right it's time to specify uh, the time of injection uh, I want it to be 10 years and in this period I want to have I want to inject this amount of pore volume uh, actually into our reservoir so this is the time of injection 10 years and uh, here uh, I have calculated the rate of injection based on uh, the period of injection and also uh, actually the cumulative uh, you know in uh, amount of injection uh, in the reservoir so um, you know, I'm here I have calculated uh, the total pore volume of the reservoir and uh, I have divided it by T which is the total time of injection and by 3 because I have 3 here all right so here I have um, you know defined uh, the well model uh, the first line of uh, of this uh, code is this part of the code uh, is to define the injector the injection well uh, because uh, you know I have not defined uh, you know any well previously uh, this is uh, an empty array this is the, the second input argument is the grid data structure uh, the rock structure and one is uh, the number of cell um, uh, actually in which our uh, well is completed in which our cell actually our well our injection well is completed and this is the name of the injector injector is its name and uh, we're going to control uh, this injection well uh, you know using its rate uh, and uh, the value of the rate uh, is equal to uh, the variable rate which was computed here and uh, here we have specified the composition of uh, the injection fluid uh, which is uh, completely water all right and in the second line we have uh, defined the producer uh, and this producer is completed in uh, the last uh, you know cell of our reservoir g.cells.num is uh, the total you know num uh, number of cells that we have and so uh, this is the last cell and the name of the injection well is producer and we can also uh, you know we want you know we want to uh, control the producer using a straight and the rate is minus rate uh, because uh, you know the fluid is being out of the reservoir so the rate uh, must be zero all right and the composition is uh, you know one because we want to produce oil actually oil is going to be produced from the producer so one is written here all right uh, we can consider the effect of uh, gravity by using the function gravity on and you know the things like that and as I told you uh, I ignored the effect of capillary but we can um, you know include its effect by using this function and uh, here I have specified the initial conditions of the reservoir using the function in its state uh, the first argument is the grid structure the second argument is the well data and the third argument is the initial pressure of a reservoir which is uh, set to 2000 psi and uh, we consider our reservoir uh, to be initially full of oil all right uh, so we don't have no actually we don't have any water we don't have any water initially in our reservoir uh, I have 
um, you know, specified the time step value uh, equal to 50 days. Uh, you can change it to uh, any number you want. And the number of time steps based on uh, the, to the total injection of time and the time step value is this. All right, and uh, here um, I have used uh, a for loop to uh, you know see the changes of saturation at reservoir, and actually uh, every time that uh, you know this uh, is going to be run, uh, actually these two lines uh, you know actually uh, need to be run, and actually I think um, you know these two lines. Uh, you know, are going to be uh, the most computationally intensive, uh, you know, lines of this code. Uh, and actually, this, uh, you know, line is uh, has used the function init tpfa, uh, which is the incompressible solver uh, of MRSD, uh, which uses two-point flux approximation to solve, you know, the problem. Uh, the first input argument is uh, actually, the output argument of uh, you know the fun this function, and the second argument is g. H d is the half trans uh, half transposibilities that uh, we previously defined at the top of uh, you know this page here. And the third input, actually the fourth input argument is the fluid model, and here we have uh, determined. Uh, the well data. All right, and in the next line, uh, we have used uh, the function implicit transport. We can also use the function explicit transport to do this calculation. And but as you um, certainly know, there are some differences, um, you know, in the calculation of these two functions. The first argument is a state, which is the output of this function, g. Uh, as I've already told you, the grid data structure, TS value, time step value, which was calculated here, uh, the rock data, the fluid data, and the well data are written in the following. All right. And um, in the next lines, uh, I have um, you know made some changes to uh, actually. Um, you know, see the data as a contour, and I have added um, some additional features to, um, you know, the plot. All right, so let me run the main section of the simulation, and the most interesting part. All right, as you see, this for loop is being run, and actually, you see the result. The water is being injected uh, at this point of the reservoir you know, through the injection well. And uh, as I told you, the producer is located at the um, you know last cell of the reservoir, which is here. And as you see, because of the variations in permeability and also the difference uh, in viscosities of the fluids that we have, um, you know these fingers. Uh, are occurring, uh, which we didn't see uh, in the previous video, uh, and actually in that video we didn't consider the effect of viscous fingering. And you know the fluid, the injected fluid is moving through uh, the most permeable parts or the most permeable uh, cells of our reservoir, and now. The breakthrough occurred, and um, so the fractional flow. Um, actually, we, you know, are also producing water um, from the injection well, and we can, um, you know, see the simulation by this video. And that's it. We're done. This is uh, the last thing we were gonna do. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something and. Uh, hope you're having a great day.